What's up guys? We are back for another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle review and today we're going away from NECA and we're going to take a look at an offering from Bandai Tamashi Nations and that would be the four brothers in their SH Figure Arts line. So these guys came out what back in 2016 I want to say and then uh, Mikey came out at the beginning of 2017 and I've always wanted to actually do a video for these guys and I figured now's the best time as I'm going back through some older but modern Ninja Turtle figures. So this is an example of the packaging they come in. You can see it's kind of a sewer layer motif with a uh, kind of portal opening here for the window and then there's a brick facade. So it looks like Leo is deep set inside the layer almost in the packaging. And then the backside has a number of product shots and kind of goes through uh, all of the details and what is included here, parts, the other brothers and things like that. They all share the same kind of box, so this is just an example, but we're going to pull all four of them out and take a look. All right, guys, here are the turtles out of the package. And after watching this review, if you want to get some turtles of your own, head on over to BigBadToyStore.com. I will put some links down in the description below so you can pick them up for yourselves. Now, as far as these figures go, as you can see here, I've kind of got them all spread out, just standard poses. But you might pick up on the fact that there is a ton of parts reuse between these figures. Out of the package, just out of the gate, they are basically the exact same figure. Uh, outside of the fact that, of course, they have different weapons, they have the different coloring for their pads, for their masks, but the figures, the base figures, are identical. They all share basically the same look and feel, and honestly, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. We do get a wide array of accessories to uh, customize them, change them up, make them, make them different, give them different expressions, all of that. But one thing that I don't see mentioned too often is the general look of these turtles and how it relates to things. So in the 80s, we had the TMNT cartoon, and they were dark green in that show. These guys are not dark green. Uh, what you may remember, or maybe not, is that in the 80s, and basically till now, a lot of licensed material had a different look for the turtles. They were a lighter shade of green. They were a little more easygoing, a little more fun, I guess, so to speak, in terms of their posing and things like that. And these turtles, at least for me, mimic that particular look. They have that light green look, and the extra heads they come with actually will allow you to make a pose that is seen on a ton of licensed material. In fact, they actually recreate it on the back of the box, and I'll talk about that here shortly. But let's start with articulation first. I'm just going to single out Donatello for this one, and then uh, we'll go through the overall look and feel of these guys together. Now, for articulation, we are kind of looking at your standard figure arts, although there are a few tweaks here and there just because of the fact that he's a turtle, so he's got a shell. It implements a few problems into the overall design that I think they work around pretty well. So we've got very, very wide range of motion on the head. Uh, it is a double ball peg that goes up into the head and down into the neck, so you can swivel all the way around, up and very, very much on the down, and then the neck will follow as well, and it bobs side to side. Arms can go up and out all around. There is a kind of half butterfly joint. Obviously, it can't go all the way across the chest because of the shell, but it helps getting him across his chest a little bit. We have got a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows and then wrists with rotation and hinge as well. So standard for fig yards. They can rotate slightly at what would be their waist, you know, humanoid waist. It's a turtle, so I guess it's not really his waist, but we'll, we'll call it that. The shells are, oddly enough, slightly articulated. It's kind of hard to pick up sometimes, but this will move. It juts up and down just a little bit. I still don't really know why, uh, but it does. We've got rotation at the thigh. He can kick forward, kick back, and this part of the shell is, well, this whole front of the shell is softer, so it helps with that movement. We've got double jointed knees, and then of course we have got ball jointed ankles, so he's got wide range of motion there, and then it's a figure art, so we've got that toe articulation. So in general, despite the fact that the shell does provide some limitations, I think they work around it really well, and you can get these guys in some fantastic poses. Now, for the overall look and feel of these guys, paint, sculpt, that deal, there is and isn't a lot to talk about because we've got four figures here, but they are, until we talk about accessories, they're all the same. Uh, like I mentioned, they're all the same. There's not really any differences here. I don't mind that. I think it's fine. It doesn't do anything for me because I'm going to change a lot of them up anyway. But in terms of this look, like I mentioned, this is very much a look that is quintessential 80s, early 90s, but it really, really relies heavily on that lighter color licensed material 
style that we saw a lot. And I really think that this is a very unique look for these turtles in the sense that you're not going to find a lot of other figures that look like this. Uh, NECA's figures, for example, the NECA cartoon turtles that came out in 2017, they definitely look like the show. These do not look exactly like the show. They look very cartoony, but they don't look like the cartoon, I guess is a, is a, is a way, but a weird way to say it. But as far as the overall look and feel of these figures goes, I think they are almost perfect. Uh, I don't really have any true issues, and they do have a lot of interesting things about them that uh, you don't see in many figures, because one thing I haven't mentioned thus far is that they have die-cast parts. So what I mean by that is they have got from the knees down, everything is die cast. And that's not it. Much of the joint structure inside the turtles themselves are metal. So we have got a lot of heft and weight. And what it really does is adds a lot of stability to these guys. So you can get them into some pretty crazy poses. And depending on how you pose them, uh, you can see what I'm talking about. You can kind of see a little bit of silver poke out here and there in certain joints, but they add a lot of covers, uh, you know, little plates, coverings to, uh, to, to mask that as much as possible. So it's not really an issue. But basically what we've got here are four turtles that are roughly about five and a half to five and three quarters inches tall. So they are slightly smaller than six inch scale but they fit in line with a lot of other toys so their size is pretty good and then in general i mean there is there is very minimal painting on these guys just because of the fact that they're one solid color of green the die cast parts are painted and i think you'd be hard pressed to find any flaws there uh, there is a lot of cartoony detail in the shells everything about them is just uh you know very very emphasized in terms of their color scheme and the overall kind of contrasting colors. I mean, there's a lot of cartoony detail in how you're looking at these things here. We've got the metallic belts with their initials on them. And then of course we have the color coded uh, bandanas and the arm and leg bands, which honestly, I think look really, really good. These are plastic on the arms. The ones on the legs are metal. And I think it's really hard to tell a difference between the two. In general, I think Bandai really, really went to town on these figures. If I have, if I had one true gripe about these is that despite the fact that they have extra heads, they only have one of the bandana tails and they're pegged in in a certain way. So they're almost keyed, but they're not really. They're basically just a certain kind of squarish type shape. So they can only go in one way. So you can't really pose them with the bandana in any real dynamic type of pose. It's not a deal breaker. It certainly doesn't bother me that much. But like I said, if I had to pick one thing, it's going to be that. And that's just beyond minimal. Now, before we move on to accessories, because honestly, that's kind of the bulk of this review, because these guys come with just so much stuff. Uh, we have got a quick comparison. I figured since I mentioned the fact that there is such a difference in the cartoon look versus the licensed materials look that we saw a lot of in the 80s, I figured it might be, you know, necessary to show you what NECA produced this past year for San Diego Comic-Con. So this is their cartoon Leonardo. And these all look the same, so there's no reason to have them all on the screen at once. But uh, this is what they looked like in the show. This is much more akin to what they looked like on TV with that dark kind of olive green color. This is what they looked like in a lot of that licensed material. Now, these all shared the same space. They aren't really separate or anything. This is just what that happened to be. And this is what the show actually was. So you saw a lot of t-shirts, and notebooks and folders and you know school supplies and posters and a lot of stuff with this type of look but then this is ultimately what they looked like in the show there's not a huge difference in terms of what you might see on tv versus what you might have on some of those materials but when you have these figures they kind of translate into a different overall look and feel so for me they occupy two different spaces and you know i'm perfectly fine having both iterations of the same character because they look very similar but also have their own quirks and differences all right, so here we go, accessory time. And these guys come with quite a bit. And again, there is a lot of parts reuse, a lot of sharing. So there is a lot that is alike amongst these guys, but there is also a lot that is different. They all, of course, come with their standard weapons. So Leo has his swords, Mikey has his nunchucks, Raph has his size, and Donnie has his bow staff. But there are a few extras. So Mikey has other versions of nunchucks. He's got other weapons. Raph has other weapons. And then Leo and Donnie include extra 
uh, non-weapon accessories as well. And of course, it's a figure arts line, so they have a spread of hands, but all the hands are the same across all of them. So here's where I want to do stop for a second, and this is kind of the moment where it's I can show you what I'm talking about in terms of the licensed property type of look. These are the alternate heads. So you can see Leo is gritting his teeth. He's very battle ready. Mike's got this kind of crooked smile. Raph is yelling and Donnie has got this goofy smile on his face. So this look is shown on the back of the box in a certain pose. This pose corresponds to one of the main licensing uh, photos or images that was used on tons of media back in the 90s and 80s and honestly up till today. So this is recreating that look and this is why I think these are more based on the licensing looks. Whether or not I'm correct is irrelevant honestly, but that's just how I how these come across. It's what did, what it makes me feel about these toys. So take it or leave it. That's just kind of where I'm at with these, but these heads are really what kind of sealed the deal for me. So what I'm going to do now is um, go through each one individually because they all come with certain things that they would be easier to show one-on-one -on -one. and then I'll show you uh, the overall hand spread that they come with because that's all very much the same. So Leo here is the easy one thankfully so we can start off with the easy one. All he comes with that is unique outside of his his own weapons and his extra head of course is a uh, manhole cover so he's got a, su a city sewer manhole cover. It's not a stand or anything like that. It, it does have a lot of texture so it's got a lot of sculpted detail on it and of course it's got some paint applications. You can make him hold it in some of the hands that he comes with uh, you know make him throw it or something like that but this is all he comes with. He does come with other stuff but I'm going to show that here in a moment when we do everybody all together. So so this is just his unique accessory. Next up we've got Donatello and he comes with one accessory as well that is again unique to him. He does come with a bunch of stuff. Uh, but we've got one slice of a kind of melty gooey uh, cheesy slice of pepperoni pizza. You can see it's got the pepperoni the cheese painted on there. Any turtle can hold it. He doesn't come with unique hands for it or anything. They've all got these kind of open style gripping hands. So you can have him hold that or give it to Mikey or whichever turtle you choose. With Raphael, we start getting into the territory where we have extra weapons included. So he, of course, comes with his two uh, size, which are obviously his weapons of choice. But we have this kind of throwing dagger, which he can hold, or any turtle can hold, by the way. Uh, it's got a, a kind of wrapping that's on, a, on the handle. It's just kind of a gunmetal color. And then he includes a uh, throwing star, which is the same kind of look and feel as the, the throwing dagger. So Raph comes with extra weapons that you can use across all the turtles. Lastly, we've got Mikey here, and he, of course, has his nunchucks, and he also comes with the most unique uh, accessories for an individual turtle. He's obviously had this one nunchuck under his arm the entirety of this review, and this has a real metal chain. It's just got a standard kind of cartoony-looking uh, basic paint on the handles there. And then we've got a second one that he can use, so you can have him holding both. But what they did include to make it a little bit different, a little more dynamic, is some hard, rigid plastic nunchucks that don't have chains. So these are pre-posed in a certain position, and then you can have him kind of slashing these in the air, which I think is kind of a cool way to mix and match stuff. The other thing he includes that is unique to him, uh, it's not necessarily something that only he can use, but it's what he came with, is the grappling hook. It's got the turtle shell end on it, it's got the grapples that actually are hinged so you can close them, and then it's got a real rope to hold it all together. So this is really cool, uh, I've actually displayed him with this for a while, it's one of my favorite accessories. Of course, I did mention they have a number of extra hands, and they do come with six extra hands for a total of eight each. So we've got the standard kind of closed fist hands, which is what they come with in the package. They've got the closed gripping hands, so there's just a hole through the hands to allow them to grip their weapons, like you see Leo doing here. We have got a more open style gripping hand, which also works for the weapons, but you can use it for things like the grappling hook, or the pizza, or the manhole cover. And then the last set of hands they have is a more open style 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 posed hand for, you know, maybe like a taunting move or just some standard kind of karate type moves that you want to pose them in. And then the last thing that is sort of unique but also not unique against all of them is that they all include replacement belts on the backside. So out of the box they don't have a way to store their weapons but you can pop the belt off on the back, replace it, and they all include sheaths so you can put their weapons and store them on the back of their shell. They all pop off very easily, they look great, and overall it adds another layer to what you can do to display these figures. So at the end of the day, these are another set, another set of amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. I think Bandai really, really outdid themselves with these figures, and I think they kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people because they really didn't sell very well. And that unfortunately seems to have cost us the opportunity to get the figure art shredder that we no longer have coming. Hopefully one day we'll see it 
but for now that remains uncertain. I think the overall look and feel of these guys kind of fills a specific place in the turtles uh, landscape, I guess. That's one way to say it, where they look a very, very specific way that I think I've harped about a bit too much on this video, but I very, I feel very strongly about their overall look and feel. The die cast parts work exceptionally well. They have great posability. They have a great look, great sculpt, minimal paint work, but it's unnecessary and it looks great in how they manage to pull this off. Tons of accessories. And in general, if you're a Turtles fan, this is an absolute must have set. I can't really stress that enough. So that's going to do it for this look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, guys.